everyone and welcome to Tips for Shooting Field Drops with April Massad and Baby Dream Backdrops. I am going to be doing three different videos for this one. I was trying not to cram it all into one video, so the first video is going to be how to set it up, second video is going to be shooting it, and the third video is going to be editing. Let's get started. When I first saw these backdrops, I was completely amazed at how realistic they looked. But I also felt like I needed to add a few things to kind of trick the viewer's brain into actually believing that it was real because I prefer, honestly, I love going outside, don't get me wrong, I love photographing outside. Sometimes in Oklahoma and probably most other places, it's hot, there are bugs, kids don't really you know, focus enough on me outside. There's too much distraction. There's butterflies, there's flowers, there's, you know, running around, something's touching them, something's itching them, poking them, whatnot. So I was super excited to get these backdrops because there's nothing I like better than bringing the outdoors inside. So there are a few things that we can do to, like I said, trick the viewer's brain into thinking that it really is outside, even though we know it's not. So props. Um, flowers, obviously, that are in the background are the perfect prop. There's also baskets that they can put the flowers in when they touch them and everything. We can think about the floor whenever we look at the backdrop also. And we can also look at the children's attire. And lighting, actually, too. Lighting is very important. So I'm going to go ahead and show you guys my whole thought process in setting up for these backdrops. Okay, so what you are looking at here is me actually videoing myself setting this thing up. Like for the first time, I did not even think through this. I pretty much did it and videoed myself as I went along. Um, right now, I'm just putting this um, grass floor down. Um, uh, this My backdrop was not a sweep. My backdrop was just an eight by 10 fleece backdrop that is on the wall. And the actual floor is an eight by 10 fleece uh, backdrop that I am smoothing out on top of heirloom calm mat. And that truly helps um, it stick down well. The good thing about this green grass is that if it's wrinkled, it, the pattern is messy, so you won't be able to tell. So I'm just smoothing it out so that I can tape it down. So I have hung the drop up with tacks. Isn't it beautiful? Hi, we're going to pretend like I'm in a lavender field. Um, this is just grass floor. I'm going to put some transitions, some grass and whatnot, and some le or flowers scattered on the floor. So I'm going to get to it. So as far as purple, this is really all I had on hand. Um, I didn't go out and buy a bunch of purple flowers. Now I'm like, well, I wish I had, but I didn't. So we're going to work with what I have. So I would like, I mean, it, it's a pretty good transition, but I do like to soften up the transition with some sort of greenery or flowers. Um, I haven't taped this down. I'm going to take this down here in a minute, but I haven't even taken the tags off of these. But you won't be able to see that. I'm just trying to provide texture at the transition of the drop and the floor. And it doesn't even have to be anything crazy. Like it can just be that. <clears throat> As you can see, that even makes a big impact. And these are literally flower garland. Now it says $29, but I am pretty sure I got these on the clearance aisle last spring. So that's a good thing to look on the clearance aisle, go to the clearance section of your Hobby Lobby or Michaels. Um, also on the end cap, sometimes they have um, clearance items, but 
This looks pretty good. So like I said, this is a grass floor and this is the lavender field drop, super realistic. I'm gonna go ahead and tape this down. Okay, so I've taped it down. Um, as you can see, I did not aim for perfection today, which is kind of my motto, but normally on a normal backdrop, I would definitely try to make it perfect just because I hate sitting behind the computer. But I make it as perfect as I can in shot so that I'm not stuck behind my computer. Um, this setup would be much easier if it was a sweep. So if you have the option to buy the sweep, I would honestly. I don't know if this is available in a sweep, but it should be because it's beautiful. Um, because this took a little bit longer. Now, normally I flip sets really quickly and I will shoot a dress in like 15 minutes and then I'll change. This would take a little bit longer. Like, I don't think I would probably, I would start with this because it's a little more complicated and then move into something easier. Um, like this as a sweep or something that just doesn't require as much setup. But I'm gonna add, I'm gonna see if I have some purple foreground flowers and I'm gonna scatter some um, flowers down on the floor. So normally I have stems that the kids can hold. My bouquets are over here and I just pick them up whenever I see them. I'll let the girls pick and then if they did a bad job picking, I'll <laughs> just pick for them. Um, I have a few purple ones that I'm gonna go ahead and get out. And sometimes, actually, usually I should say, I let, I'm getting all the purple ones out. I don't care that it's a rose, it's purple. Um, normally I let the kids do this, but it's a three-year-old that's coming and that's pretty um she's new and so i'm gonna go ahead and get it done usually i would also add some white in there but since this scene is pretty dark i'm gonna keep it with it Ooh, gosh i sure wish i had a bunch of that but i don't okay let's see no purple in there so i'm just gonna go ahead and just throw those out there. Um, I do have this, oops, which is real pretty. Kind of light, but I'm gonna lay it down. And like I said, oh, that doesn't match. We're not gonna use that. You know, and what's bad is I have um, purple like this but these little beads fall off and get everywhere. And so I'm not about to be doing that. But I did make a pretty little bouquet of random flowers and I just hot glued that to it. And I think that that's really pretty. So I'm gonna make sure that she sees that. But yeah, that, <laughs> these little balls come off and get everywhere even though it's like literal perfection. But anyway so when I'm not completely sure about something like these flowers being in the foreground I'll try it because I figure what does it hurt which that's kind of pretty right I mean even though it's not like totally per like purple it's still pretty right okay I'm going to go ahead and put these in the foreground and do a couple of shots and we'll see Okay, I have my handy dandy flower blocks here. I have another video that is shows you how to do this. Literally the simplest thing ever, okay? Take the flower, shake it out, or bend the stems out so it's full. And stick the stem in there. The reason I use the four by four, which you can pretty much do, I'm gonna keep that one for the other block. You can pretty much do any size you want, but the reason I did four by four is I can drill the hole further. And sometimes I want my flower stem 
to go deeper so that it doesn't bow, which you can bend them, and sometimes they do get bent. Okay, I'm not hating that. Okay, because like the yellow tones in the flowers um, go with the background, so I think this is actually gonna be really pretty. But anyway, I'm gonna go ahead and stick these bad boys in. Oh my gosh, I'm kinda digging it. I'm kinda digging it, okay, okay. So I have both of my um, blocks loaded. I stuck some greenery on the bottom. I am no perfectionist, um, just to kind of hide the bottom. The rest I can do quickly in Photoshop. Um, so I think that looks really pretty. Um, when the model gets here, I'll really be able to tell. I have her tape, even though she's three, um, you know, they need direction. And if I say go to the tape when I'm back there, which is where I shoot from, she's gonna know what I am talking about. So, it works. I'm gonna move these out of the way and sweep over there and get ready. Hey, so I'm gonna talk a little bit right now about styling, just a little bit. Um, I have been shooting styled sessions oh, for years and years and years. For, oh my gosh, 10 years now? 10 years now, I think. I used to work with local boutiques and they would supply me with dresses. I would photograph them, supply them with images and they would sell out of the dresses and it was a good little relationship we had. It was a blast, I loved it. Um, the thing with offering um, dresses for your clients is it really takes a lot of stress off of them. It allows you to control the style of the shoot Sorry, I'm not sure where that cut off. I don't know where that happened. But anyway, so it allows you to control the session and style the session how you would like. Takes a lot of stress off of mom. And it makes sure that you're going to um, definitely get the look and the style that you want. So I'm just gonna talk a little bit about how I choose dresses for my sessions. So I have my, a few of the backdrops that I shot. The uh, lavender field is on the wall. Um, so for the poppy fields, I knew that I wanted a 4th of July look. And so I went on the resale groups and asked for some 4th of July dresses. I wanted casual, you know, something that you would truly uh, wear in a field of poppies and blue bonnets. Um, this adorable little dress is Putty Girl. I have never even heard of that brand. I know, right? It's surprising. And this was just beautiful. I believe that Carriage House um, was the other one that I had. And um, the resale groups are an amazing resource to um, get a hold of dresses like this to have. And then you just sell them and get your money back. So that was for the poppies. Um, most of these... Yeah, you like that? <laughs> My sandals that I ran out of the house with. Pretty much, if you would wear it in a field, then you can wear it with these uh, backdrops, pretty much. Um, I always have these kind of flowy boho dresses on hand, just because they are awesome staples to have. They go with any um, backdrop. This is what she wore with the dandelions and she wore a similar dress with the white. Um, so the lavender, I actually, with the lavender, put it with a purple dress. Now, I did that because, let me talk about that because that's kind of like an opinion thing. So for, oh my gosh, oh my gosh, that was like 20 years ago or something crazy. Um, actually 20 years ago, Gary Box did a presentation and he talked about color theory and I'll never forget it. And it's, it's, it's sort of like morphed into my own, um, personal habits with styling. He would put the same or a similar color family sometimes with the backdrop. So like if you had a purple backdrop, he would do like a purple dress with it. Or if it was a red backdrop, he would do a red dress with it. And his whole 
reasoning for that stemmed from sort of like classic portraiture where if the color is similar to the backdrop, then the opposite is the face and the actual model or subject. And that's where your focus should be. And I agree with that. So unless I am trying to like sell a dress or a backdrop or something like that, and I want the focus to be on one or the other, I want my focus to be on the client's beautiful face. So if their dress matches the backdrop or coordinates, we should say coordinate because matches kind of could be like a negative term. But if it coordinates with the backdrop, then the eye automatically goes to the face and it's beautiful as you can see. And I just love the way it looks. Um, let me show you some accessories. So I had had these uh, hats for years, probably about six years. Um, and they are from the Baby Gap. And as you know, if you've ever shopped at the Baby Gap, pretty much it's the same stuff for the last 15, 20 years. <laughs> so these are from the Baby Gap, and you can probably actually um, find these now. You could probably even find them online. They're the child's hats. This one's a little bit different than this one. Um, and I just add things to it. And this, uh, these flowers are just stuck in this brim. And I just love them because I can take this off if I want to, or leave it on and then it can be plain. They can wear it if they want to. They can hold it. It's just a nice little prop to have. Um, also for the uh, field backdrops, I love some flower crowns. Um, you can make your own. There's tons of places you can get them online. You can get them on Amazon. People uh, make them by hand and they're beautiful and gorgeous and perfect. And I mean, nothing screams flower field pictures like flower crowns and hats, right? Pretty much whatever you would have your client wear in an actual field, bring it into the studio and it's gonna be perfect and beautiful. Since I am here at the studio um, talking about styling, I'm gonna go ahead and tell you guys these things because I know I'll probably get asked. Um, this, my studio is the shooting space. Um, my actual studio is in there, but this is like the front room where my window light is beautiful and I like to shoot in here. Um, because the light is just so good and so size wise this wall that this 8 by 10 backdrop is on is 15 feet wide so that kind of tells you how small this room is that's a v flat so this wall is 15 feet usually the tape is right here which is about four feet to five feet from the backdrop and i shoot from back here um, i usually sit right here on this bench um, I have a torn ACL and so it's just easier for me. I shoot this way and I am 17 feet from my sub from where I sit to my subject at the painter's tape. Um, so that kind of gives you the lay of the land. That wraps up part one. Go ahead and find part two. Join me. I would love for you to join me in part two where I am going to shoot um, have a video of shooting the lavender drop and then I will go into the other four drops that I also put together and shot and then move into editing. So see you in part two.